Hey, what's up, runner? Coach Kyle here, and today you're gonna to learn about the Atreyu shoes, the company, and their business model. So, let's get into it. I'm Coach Kyle, and I work primarily with plant-based runners all over the world to improve their running through optimizing their training, strength work, mindfulness, meditations, and whatever else needs alignment. Today, I'm gonna to go over my 300-mile recap of these lovelies and and what you need to know about them. So first off, if you haven't heard of a Treyu, that's all right. They're a super small shoe company launched in the summer of 2020, and I purchased these. Um, I purchased them a couple months ago, and I've been rotating them with a couple other shoes that I have during this marathon training campaign. Let's talk about the company super briefly. It was really just. Michael and his brother Gabriel launched the company down in Austin, Texas, and I feel like uh, you're not gonna find as personable of a, of a brand in the shoe industry especially, but there's there's not a lot of companies in, in the running industry that are as personal as a trade. Check out their Instagram and their Facebook. They're the founder Michael will he'll do lives and the stories on their Instagram are are really cool behind the scenes you get to you get a sense of who the company is you're not just buying uh, from some random giant company Saucony I can't name a, per, a single person in Saucony but I feel like I'd be able to recognize a bunch of you know half the people who work at a you I'd be able to recognize them at a coffee shop down in Austin if I were to visit uh, it's cool to get that behind the scenes to hear from the the founder about the struggles they're experiencing as a small business that really started up and launched right when COVID COVID did and you get a really good sense of the people who work down at that warehouse slash office in Austin they enjoy working there. They're having fun. So I'm not just buying some random pair of shoes, but I'm buying from a company that I feel like I care about a little bit. As for the business model, again, something unique about them. So I purchased this pair for $95 shipped. And initially they launched this, their base model in three colorways. This is the Fear Only Regret colorway. They launched these basically to pay for the first wave of the subscription service. And each additional wave of the subscription service, at least S September of 2020, is paying for the next wave. And so I got my first pair from the subscription, and this is The Battle Lies Within. Same model, just different colorways. I think they're up to five colorways now. And how the subscription works is you can purchase a one-off pair for $95 shipped, or you can purchase, sign up for the subscription service, and these were $68, and I signed up for the three-month interval. So I'll get another pair, I selected a different colorway, in three months from now. The thought process there is that when you get your, you get your first pair, $68, this is the best pair of shoes, new full retail price you will ever purchase for $68, people. And when you get your second pair and ongoing, they send you the new pair, fresh pair of kicks, and they send you a prepaid return shipping label to send your old pair back if it's in, you know, okay condition, and they'll donate those returned pairs to those in need in Austin, Texas. So you're getting a fresh pair of kicks for a really great price, and your old pair is going back to get used by somebody who needs a new, who needs a pair of shoes. But in my case, I think I'll probably just run through them, run them to death, as I typically, typically do with my footwear, and um, just ditch them because they're not going to be usable. So I signed up for the three-month subscription service, so I'm not going to be sending any back. But how they're able to keep their prices down is due to two things. I feel like it's simplicity in the shoes. It's not like a cheap, crappy pair of shoes. They're just really smartly built and designed, and then their business is really dialed in. They are, for example, they don't really have a marketing budget. They send out all the shoes themselves. They're not paying some warehouse to store their shoes and paying the warehouse employees to send out the shoes. They're doing it themselves on their own time, 
and they're combining, I think they combine their, their little warehouse and their office space together. So they're saving a lot of money in the cost of operating their business, but also in the manufacturing, the design of the shoes, there's a lot of time savings as well, or not time, money savings as well. So that's why they can sell their shoes for $68 a pair and still make, make money to continue running their business. Now, also one thing you need to know, you need to know is not only are these shoes, you know, super cheap compared to a hundred and $150 for a typical pair of running shoes, but they're also super light five and a half ounces. These literally weigh half of what a pair of Brooks adrenaline weighs. I've, and they're no, people notice these shoes. They don't, they don't look quite normal and you can tell there's something special. And I've passed this pair around at a number of group runs and people, they, first thing they do, oh my gosh, these are light and they are so light. <laughs> like, can you believe these literally weigh half of what a pair of, uh, you know, uh, heavy cushioned shoes weigh about probably about two thirds of what these Canvaras weigh five and a half ounces. And part of why they're so light is part of why they're so inexpensive. So let's go over the shoe, starting with the chassis, the platform. It's a single piece, a single slab of EVA. So typically EVA is reserved for the midsole where you have this softer, more cushy EVA with harder, more dense rubber glued onto the outsole. So what that does is that the rubber is more durable, it's heavier, but it's not super flexible. So what something like this Kinvara did before I wore, wore through it is it was slabs of the harder rubber glued onto the midsole. That costs money, it produces waste, and it adds weight. So a Treyu, it's a single slab of EVA but they mix it with a hardening agent. So it's got the, the, it's got the softness, the flexibility of EVA, but it's a little more durable than your typical EVA. So it's nice and flexible, good, good, good bend right there. And it's, they're not meant to last 1500 miles. They're, they're not like a vapor fly that's meant to last a hundred miles, but there's certainly been some wear and you can, you can really see that especially if I do this, like they wear out and I actually took a caliper to it and I think the midsole has worn out slash compressed a good five millimeters. That's, you know, five pennies of thickness and I've got some wear down in the heel as well. So you can see I'm making a lot of contact right here, right here, and then I'm towing off up here. So, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a glancing rear foot slash midfoot striker and I got a, I got a pretty strong toe off. So that's where a lot of the wear is, is coming in on these. But with the, so the one slab sole, again, saves waste, saves money, saves weight. Cause you're not, you're not, people aren't, you know, spending time gluing on the pieces and you know, that, that adds stuff to it, cost and weight. Now with the upper, it's a single piece, a single piece, single piece upper and other than, of course, we've got the, uh, the tongue, but the single piece upper reduces weight and it reduces um, cost. So with something like the Saucony Kinvara, we've got a super thick upper with, it's like we've got cloth with plastic on plastic on decals, and there's just so much going on, so much going on. This, it's simple and it's clean, even, even the, the decals are dyed in. So again, it's simple and it's not adding weight, it's reducing cost. Even the eyelets are, did they have extra stitching around them, not more plastic glued onto it. The only thing added onto it is this, this little loop back here. And then upper is nice, it's got a soft heel collar. Always try to find a soft uh, like rear heel counter. Uh, a hard one can push in on your Achilles and really cause problems. And it's, it's almost, it's a, it's not, it feels a little bit like felt along the, the collar here. It's not felt. I can't think of what it's called, but uh, it's re really soft and nice. And even the tongue is, is that material as well. And it's got a little bit of extra material in the back. Otherwise the upper, super light. It's got a, the only really thing added onto it is a toe guard along the top right up here. Otherwise, mm -hmm. 
there's not much to this upper. And that again, keeps the cost down, keeps the waist down, keeps the weight down. So what do I think about these shoes? I had to, my wife asked me this recently actually, and I told her I had to kind of make a rule to only run in these on alternate runs. So I would run in this pair, and then I would run in this pair, then I would run in the Atreyu, then I would run in the Scora Tempos, because it, otherwise I would just run in these all the time because I love them. And you know I like I like the kin they're I like the Kinvaras. I really feel like they're a lighter version of the Kinvaras. Um, and I, these were my number one favorite shoe until I got these. And now these have taken that for, that's these have easily taken that top spot. They're so light. They feel like I'm, they're just waiting. <laughs> they're waiting for my foot to land in them on the ground. And I, you know, I take my foot up, put my foot back down, and there they were waiting for me to put, place my foot right on top. They're just so incredibly light. And I found when I first purchased them, I really tightened them quite snugly, but I found that I actually prefer them super loose. And so I really, I barely tighten the laces at all. They're, there's a lot of give, and I found that that's preferable. So you just have to play around with it. They've gotten a lot more comfortable. Every, you know, they were out of the box, like a normal pair of shoes, they're pretty stiff. I only have one run in these, so you can tell, just a single run, no wear yet. But in these, they've, they really, they really just kind of soften up over time. And they're more comfortable now than they were 100 miles ago, than they were 100 miles ago. And so they, they kind of say, and with the subscription, they say, and with, you know, the, the lack of rubber, they kind of recommend two, 300 miles max on these for most people. And I'm, I'm notorious for wearing shoes until, until they, until they're, until they wear out basically. So, um, I'm going to run in them longer than most people probably will, but I've got 300 miles in these and I'm probably going to get, I would expect at least 500, but by then they're going to be noticeably compressed and worn out compared to these. And you can tell, I mean, they, they get some good use out of them, but, um, and there is, you can see there's some, there's been some compression and the, the I measured the, the heel is compressed just a couple millimeters. The forefoot is compressed slash worn away. I think it was about five millimeters. So one thing that is important when you're wearing shoes until they wear out really is to not just run in this one pair because the idea is that every time you run that wear is over is eventually over exaggerating that supination that pronation it's over exaggerating your foot movements now i think if you only run in those pairs every time probably not a great thing but if you're wearing a shoe rotation where every run is different than the one run before it and then run to come I think that helps you be your feet. I think the ver variation is good for your feet, and I think it helps you be a little more okay with running in one pair of shoes longer. So, I think that's all I got for today. I really recommend trying these out. They look cool. <laughs> they look cool. They're comfortable. I love the company. They're. I think they're just a good group of people, and I'm looking forward to what they have in store for the future. So. Let me know if you're thinking about trying them out. Let me know if you've tried them out, what you thought. And as always, you keep running, I'll keep coaching.